Well, my name is Dave Erickson. Hi, my name is Tanya Bollinger. My name is Kayleen. So God has always been real to me. Um, God had always been a part of my life, but never had God been everything. I didn't realize how much identity I had wrapped up in my work, um, being a nurse at Mayo. I didn't realize when people asked me that, how much I associated with that. I was looking in the future, my daughter is graduating, and I would think about the things that I wanted to do afterwards, maybe start a business or move down south. And it came to a point that there was nothing I couldn't even, there was no hopes, no dreams there. I couldn't even imagine any kind of future. I remember really just taking it to God and being like, okay, who, who am I now? What, what defines me since I'm not a nurse, not working at a hospital, I'm not this labor and delivery nurse or whatnot. Um, how, how should I explain myself? So my wife and I knew we had three options in front of us uh, that I could choose from. Uh, the first option was really what I wanted. Um, it was a corporate uh, job. It had everything that the world and the legal community said would be the steps you need to take to eventually be, maybe be a judge someday, be on the Court of Appeals, everything that you wanted to do to have success. My daughter's um, dating this great boy, and her, his uh, um, mother came and asked me to go for a walk. And I couldn't figure out why she would want to spend any time with me. But I said yes, and she told me about how God had affected her life and the wonderful things that he had done. And for her just to open up like that, um, I was impressed. But my wife and I decided to really give it to the Lord in prayer. And so I remember one night uh, we sat down next to our bed and we started praying through um, Philippians 3 where Paul talked about forsaking everything. Uh, for the sake of just knowing Christ and that the surpassing knowledge of Christ was so much more of value than anything this world had. And when we finished that, we could just feel God's presence and I kind of knew that this dream job and this dream career was not what God wanted for me. He had something else. Little did I know that something else was the thing that was at the bottom of my list and the last thing I ever wanted to do. Well, what do, what do I do with my life? Should I like get another part-time job? Should I try to fit this into our life? Um, and I felt like he just kind of whispered to my heart and he said, you're wrestling with your identity because you're choosing to find your identity in people and not in me. And Sue called and asked if we wanted to go to Christmas Eve church. And so we said yes. And I was kind of excited about it because I hadn't gone for a couple of years. And the um, sermon was wonderful. It just brought me in. And I remembered that Sue had said that these um, sermons were online. And so I started listening to them. And they just, they caught me. And in that moment it was so convicting that if I decided to choose what I wanted from life and include God in it, it wasn't his will for me. And I, and at that point had to lay down my dreams and follow what God had. I knew I needed to reach out. Uh, Chad did these sermons, I gave him a call and made an appointment to talk with him. Meanwhile, I find out that I have breast cancer. As time went on, I was home more. He started giving me more contentment and joy and seeing the value in the time I was investing in my kids. Um, and so I really wanted to start spending more quality time with him. Um, but I was wrestling with like, okay, how do I fit that into my day? Okay, I've got nap time, I've got preschool pickup. How does that work? Um, and so I felt like he was nudging me to get up early. And I was like, ugh, I really covet my sleep. I don't want to sacrifice that, but if that's my only time, I, I'll give it a try. But God was always there, and he was always real and alive. To know that this was his will for me, and to know that this is what he called me to do, meant everything. And it wasn't easy, though. People always say, once you, God's alive in you, you know, it should be easy, it should be great. It wasn't. The first couple years, I fought depression. I fought anxiety, but I persevered knowing that God was with me and he was alive and this was the direction he was taking us down. It wasn't that every time I met with him, I had a revelation. It was more just being in his presence that I felt like was starting to change me. I sat with Chad, I cried a lot. And um, Jesus is working through Chad, I know he was, because I've heard these things before, but when he said them to me, they just, they hit me. My heart just 
stopped. I just had to take an extra breath. And, oh my God, it was such a relief, such a relief to let it all go and to say, I, I, don't, need, I, need, I don't need to do this myself. Circumstances continue to change, um, but God really doesn't. I found a, a lump that <laughs> I went into the doctor's office to get checked out, and they felt like it would be better if I went to a specialist. And so um, I made an appointment, but of course, it takes time to get into a specialist. And so I still haven't gone in yet. I go in in a week, and um, all of the emotions that naturally come with the unknown started to flood me. And so actually last week I had gotten up early to spend time with him and I was just kind of pouring my heart out again. And Jesus started whispering to my heart and he said, what if this unknown um, is really a gift for you? Um, what if it's meant to change you and make you more like me? And I, I agreed. I was like, yeah, I want this to be something that you change me more through this process than, than my fears changing me. What happened in the long run was um, God did some amazing things. When I was finally to lay, willing to lay down what I wanted and actually have what he wanted, we got to advance the kingdom in really unique ways. Since then, I have gotten to meet so many wonderful people. I've had so much support from so many people. And I know that I'm getting through this hard times because of, because of God working through all these people. They're, these are my miracles. Miracles don't need to be huge. The more you draw near to Jesus, the more he will draw near to you and he will change you for the better. And I guess I'd say if um, you've never really given him a chance, um, just start talking to him. It doesn't have to be hours at a time. It could be like a couple minutes um, because he will show up. He keeps showing up for me. He keeps responding to me. He keeps um, bringing new things to me.